um, uh, get her uh, challenges figured out here in the next few minutes and join us a little late. And if we have to, we'll get her caught up. But um, so um, I'm going to call Jay. Jay, oh. Jay, before you start, I want to ask Rachel. When I was signing on, I had this box came up. Enter your email and name. That's where I was stuck up. I was not oh. going forward. Yes, and I apologize about that. I think that is a feature of the webinar. Perhaps when folks join the meeting, it just does ask for your name and email as a way of getting in. So that um, probably has got me stuck up. Oh, okay. sorry about that. Yeah, I think that's just a function of the webinar is just you enter the meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Jay. Oh, no, that's the point. To all these challenges with these meetings, I get it. So I'm going to call the meeting to order per ORS 192.610 <laughs> Uh, 192.690 and ORS 192.650. This meeting is being recorded. Also, this recording will be posted on the Clackamas Fire District website at the end of the. Um, uh, and sometimes whenever when Rachel can get around to it. So, uh, Chief Charlton, any changes to the agenda? Oh, we do. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, a little while ago, you should have received a revised agenda. We are adding one business item. This will be B3, and that is a request board, board approval of a partial distribution of a low SAP funds for a qualifying event. And that will be, that discussion will be led by Battalion Chief Steve Dieters. Uh, this is a timely issue that just came before uh, the fire district uh, today, and we wanna get it uh, resolved for the members. So we'll have that for you as B3. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, next item is approval of the regular board meeting minutes on September 28th. Uh, does any uh, <laughs> board member have any comments about the the, the uh, minutes? Okay. So um, we don't need a motion to approve those, right? We can just do that by consensus to approve those since there's no changes, is that correct? Yes. Okay, good enough. Uh, so the minutes are approved by uh, by consensus. All right, public comment. Um, is there anybody for public comment like to have their three minutes? I know that we do have uh, a guest or two out there. That looks like we um, do, Mr. President, have uh, Rich on today. And Rich, I see that you've raised your hand. So um, if it's okay with you, Mr. President, yeah. I can... Um, call on Rich to share his public comment or question? Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. All right, go ahead, Rich, whenever you're ready. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, hi, I'm Rich Nippon. I moved to uh, Oak Grove two years ago. Came from uh, Naples, Florida. Before that, I was in Pennsylvania. And before that, I was in New Jersey. Uh, 30 years, I was a volunteer firefighter. Uh, been a cert member somewhere for 13 years. I've been in the uh, Portland net when I lived in Hayden Island and I've been in the Oak Lodge uh, cert since uh, moving to uh, Oak Grove. Uh, I'm just here to see what I can do to help. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you need a volunteer for something, think of me. That's it. Well, Rich, thank you for that. Um, you know, there's plenty of opportunity out there with uh, with the fire district. So I'm sure if you get a hold of the administrative offices during the week, that they can uh, they can uh, point you in the right direction for uh, how how your uh, skills can benefit the fire district. So thank you for that. Okay. okay. Any other? Questions? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that, that's it. I was just uh, unmuting. Unmuting. Okay. Uh, any other public comment? Okay. Um, business actions items. Um, we need to talk about the uh, resolution 20.7 adopting an, um, the uh, supplemental budget. Christina. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. Um, you have before you resolution 2007 to um, make some changes and adjustments to the adopted budget. The primary reason for doing this, as we discussed um, at last month's board meeting, is to recognize the loan potential loan proceeds from the TANs and 
the repayment plus interest of those same TANs. And I've also um, taken advantage of the opportunity to um, add in a bunch of other things to uh, grant revenues and um, conflag revenues and expenses and those kinds of things while we're at it. Um, so I hope you've had a chance to read this. I'm happy to go through and answer any questions you might have. I can just go down the list if you'd like on the supplemental budget sheet, attachment A. <clears throat> any uh, board members have any uh, questions or comments for uh, Christina? I know Marilyn's trying to unmute herself there, so. Unfortunately, we cannot hear her. Mr. President, maybe she could put her comments in the chat, then we could see those or get those to the board. <clears throat> we'll see if she can do that. I will ask a question, Jay. Yes, Thomas. While we are waiting for Marilyn, you know, uh, Christine, now I see the supplemental budget, $83,000 is the income and the expense the same amount. So why do we need a supplemental budget? Is it because the ex this income and expenses are beyond the budgeted in the early? Yes, um, we to anytime you increase the expenditures in a fund over what was adopted, you have to do um, some form of supplemental budget, whether that's just a resolution like this one, or you have to hold another public hearing and everything. Um, so if we, so say we get a grant, you know, $50,000, we would need to also increase our authority to spend by $50,000 so we can actually use that grant. Um, so just because it's income doesn't mean we can do it without making a supplemental budget only yep only if we want to spend it then we have to do a supplemental budget so mm -hmm. we but can if receive, it doesn't have to be spent you don't have to right we can receive revenue all we want if we don't okay. want to spend it without now, doing a supplemental now these expenses become additional expenses because of the income generated why, why did this additional expense <clears throat> was created so there's a couple of different things going on in this one. Um, you can see, if you're looking at attachment A yes. on the resolution, you can see there's contract income, 158,108. Um, that's a, a contract that we entered into with Sandy Fire for training and um, command and control services. So since we're getting that revenue, will also likely have corresponding costs to provide that training. So we also need to increase our, our expenditures down um, below. Um, the grants, $368,100, those are mostly COVID grants, um, COVID related uh, funds coming back in. There is um, about $15,000 in an AFG grant from last year that we didn't get spent last year. So it's carrying forward into this fiscal year. And the conflagration reimbursements, of course, are the Mosier and White River. Um, those are the revenues we anticipate coming back. And then the corresponding expenditures are down under emergency services as well in the expenditures. On the that con contractual income, it says 158. Where does the expense show so for that uh, division, for that expenses? It is in emergency services because it's being, okay. they're the department okay. that's gonna incur okay. the cost. Sure. To Thank um, you. bring that revenue. Thank you. Um, so Christina, Marilyn did ask through chat. Um, she says, what about the estimated increases in personnel costs? Those are mostly related to um, the conflagrations 
all the overtime and ops replacement we've already had due to the wildfires. Um, so we've already spent that money and we won't be getting revenues back in on it until we can uh, claim reimbursement for those conflagrations. So that's, that's what the personnel services increases are, are from, is we're kind of on the back end of getting it into the budget, but, um, and we'll have more of that because there's just two conflagrations in here. And at some point during the year, I'll have to bring back another supplemental to um, appropriate, I think there's two, maybe three more, plus all the major wildfires. So uh, we'll be seeing more of the conflagration reimbursements later this year as well. I hope that answered the question. Thank you. So I've got, uh, I've, yeah, I've got Marilyn on my speakerphone. So we're trying to uh, do this, uh, um, trying to figure this out so Marilyn can be involved. So Marilyn, did you have any other comments that you wanted to make? No, thank you, Jay. Okay. Okay, uh, any other comments on uh, the resolution? Okay, so, um, so do I hear a motion to approve resolution 20-07 adopting then appropriating the supplemental budget for fiscal year 2020 to 2021? I move that we approve that 2020 to 2021 supplemental budget as presented in resolution 2007. Do I have a second? Second. Don seconds. Okay. Rachel, call the roll, please. Marilyn Wall? Yes. Yeah. Jim Searing? Yes. Don Trotter? Yes. Jay Cross? Yes. Thomas Joseph? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Chief Charlton, board policy and manual. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, in your packet, you have uh, the track change copy of the board policy manual. Again, this is the board policy manual, which was adopted by the board in December of 2019. Uh, this is a two-step process. So back at the September board me uh, meeting, staff presented a, a number of minor edits. Uh, we sought any uh, board feedback. Uh, we've provided a few more minor edits to include the uh, board committee and liaison assignments. We received that from President Cross. So what you have in your packet are those changes. Now, our recommendation tonight is to uh, move to approve the revised board policy manual. Then we will accept all of those changes, post on the uh, website, and also send out to the board a clean copy of the updated board policy manual. We are happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions for the chief or the staff about this? No. Okay, super duper. Um, so do I hear a, a motion to approve the, revor the revised board policy manual? So, so move. Move. Oh, Go ahead, Jim. Do so moved. Okay, Jim Searing uh, moved. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All right, Don Trotter seconds the motion. Uh, Rachel, call the roll, please. Thomas Joseph? Yes. Don Trotter? Yes. Jay Cross? Yes. Jim Searing? Yes. Marilyn Wall? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, B3. Um, in a request for approval of a partial distribution of low SAP funds qualifying event, Chief Steve Dieters. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I've brought this to the board at one time or another, probably uh, four or five times now. Uh, one of the benefits to the LOSAP program is if a vested member has a qualifying event, um, they can do what's called a partial distribution of, of their account to cover that uh, qualifying event. And in this case, we do have a vested member that had a qualifying event and would like to use the opportunity to uh, do a partial withdrawal of their uh, vested account. And uh, we need your approval uh, to do that. That's by contract. And so that uh, it, because it is uh, such a, a rarity that, that it needs to be in the minutes that you've approved it. Um, 
this person is vested, they do have the qualifying funds and it is a qualifying event. Uh, and uh, with your approval, I'll start the paperwork and uh, get it done for them. I'm happy to answer any questions. Chief, my, I understand too that there's some uh, urgency behind this as well. Is that right? Uh, there is. There, it, it, they always take a little bit of time, but if we can get the approval tonight, it'll it'll expedite it just a little bit. Uh, um, but it, it'll take a little bit of time, and the, the person's aware of that. Well, and I will tell you, you know, I'm on the OFDDA board, and Genoa is here as well. And if we can get, we're, we've been seeing, unfortunately, we've been fortunately and or unfortunately, we've been seeing quite a few of these recently as well. So if you can get that stuff to um, the the powers to be at OFDDA, we, we can get that approved um, almost overnight. So just to let you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Genoa, any comments on that? No, we we're doing a 24 hour turnaround and at our office and it's been taking about two to three weeks by the time it gets to Houston. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, anybody, any board members have any comments for Chief Dieters? Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the uh, partial distribution of the LOSAP funds for the qualifying event? So moved. I Jim second Sharing, that. This Jim is Sharing and Thomas Joseph, first and second. Uh, Rachel, call the roll, please. Marilyn Wall. Yes. Jim Searing. Yes. Jay Cross. Yes. Don Trotter. Yes. Thomas Joseph. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Chief Dieter, is there anything we need to sign as board members or anything and get you anything, or how does that work? No, no, okay. just a, a copy of the minutes works just fine. Okay, good enough. Okay, um, business items. Um, Director Trotter on foundation. Okay, you all are familiar with the foundation wildfire relief fund that's been going on now. And so far, we have collected over $120,000. And of that, $39,755 has been approved for 44 of those affected. And many of those are from Estacada area. And I think that it's very great to see how much the community is willing to contribute to this great, great fund and also for all the people that are helping get it done. Be happy to answer any questions. Thomas? This is not a question, Don. Okay. Uh, our Cla Clackamas Rotary has collected about $1,900 in the members donated to the wildfire related expenses and we spent $600 with a food cart at the Clackamas Town Center uh, since we are not going to keep that wildfire account open anymore, that is 1,300 and some odd change left. We are going to donate that to Clackamas Emergency Services. I talked to Kyle Gorman. The only stipulation is it has to be used for uh, related to wildfire relief. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Any other comments for uh, Director Trotter? Okay, uh, joint oversight, uh, Director Trotter, Director Searing, you have anything for us? I can uh, probably start out. Uh, thank you, uh, President. Our joint oversight committee meeting was last Wednesday, October 14th. Uh, two main topics of the meeting were wildfire updates and updates on the merger election between the two fire districts. We decided as a committee in cooperation with the chiefs uh, and our two colleagues from Estacada to do our meeting as an open public forum. Uh, the chiefs put together the webinar uh, system as we're using tonight. And uh, we decided to advertise that and get public input, allow the public to hear the topics of the wildfire and the topic of the merger updates. It ended up being a three hour meeting, but uh, 
we had a lot of good interaction with a lot of public members. So in the end, we thought that it was uh, beneficial to do that. Uh, on the wildfire updates, our chief's group continues their after action review reporting. The formal report uh, sounds like it won't be completed until December, but uh, Chief Nick Brown gave a lot of, uh, of updates, talked a lot about a lot of the issues that citizens have been uh, calling in and texting and meeting, um, and uh, we're making some headway there. Uh, they, the chief's group is doing a good job taking responsibility on behalf of the fire district and, and talking about the issues that came up that we're hearing about uh, from the public and taking responsibility for those, looking for ways of improvement. Um, so we're uh, making headway there. I'd like to personally thank Chief Nick Brown and Chief Dieters and uh, uh, Brandon did a great job uh, putting that uh, webinar together and being heartfelt and good comments. And uh, I thought it went really well. And so thank you to all of you for your work on that. Uh, in regards to the merger updates, uh, we covered the facts of the merger, had a lot of interaction in regards to uh, that topic with, with the public. There, is a lot of misinformation out there. We recognize that. So we did our best to try to state the facts uh, in regards to the budget and the staffing and everything that is built into what a yes vote means. Uh, and uh, it's been difficult, it's been frustrating, but uh, in the end, we continue to support our firefighters, our personnel, uh, both on the wildfire and, and everything that they do on a daily basis. We support our volunteers and all of the, the efforts and the work. Uh, and uh, we'll get through the election. It's a couple weeks away. So uh, we'll know one way, way or another. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, it was a good meeting. I'm glad we did it in the public format that we did. It was long, but thanks again to everyone for all the great work you're doing. And uh, anything that I missed, Director Trotter? No, or I think Carlton or any of the, any of Chief Brown, Steve, any of you would like to chime in? Uh, I would just comment that I agree with what Jim was saying about a lot of input from the public also. And I think those questions were answered well. I think it was also good that with the Joint Oversight Committee, there was two board members from Estacada also there who chimed in also. And so I think I also totally agree with Jim on his comments about our staff, all of them, Fred and Steve and Nick, all of them and Brandon that helped set this whole thing up and also did a great effort in answering the questions. Yeah, I will say uh, thank you, obviously, for you guys for doing that. I know that for me personally, I have had to field um, numerous questions as well, just impromptu. And so I can just imagine what it's like in a formal setting um, to uh, have to uh, go through that process as well. So um, strong work, you guys. Keep it up. So that's a tough situation, but strong work out there. Anybody else have any comments for um, joint oversight? Okay, thank you for that report. Um, Chief Charlton, uh, COVID-19 update. Sure, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Just a few items as we continue to um, uh, respond to uh, the, the worldwide uh, pandemic. Again, we remain focused on our number one organizational priority, and that is the health and well-being of all of our employees, volunteers, and the communities we serve. Uh, we have extended our closure of community meeting rooms and access to community fire stations through the end of December. So uh, we did that. As you, as you can see in the last couple of weeks, the case count uh, across Oregon and here in Clackamas County uh, is still significant. So we want to ensure that we have all the precautions in place to, to uh, help uh, everyone stay healthy. And then also, thank you to President Cross. Uh, we looked at some best practices when we get into um, Op Santa, our annual Op Santa. We know that there will probably be an outpouring of support of donated items. We want to ensure as those items come into the fire district 
they are handled properly and then turned around, sorted and distributed. So we have some best practices around receiving items from the public as we get into Op Santa. So we'll be working hard to, again, receive those items and then uh, get them distributed. So that's uh, our update on COVID-19. Happy to answer any questions before we move on to the wildfires. Any comments? Okay, uh, wildfire update. All right, thank you. Uh, as was just uh, shared by uh, Director Sarah and Director Trotter, we did host a community meeting last week. Followed up by last Thursday, we, uh, we did a, a meeting of the uh, Estacada Chamber of Commerce and the Estacada Fire Board last Thursday evening and presented information around the wildfires uh, and the merger. Uh, around the wildfires, again, we can't say it enough, but thank you to our employees, volunteers, community members, CERT members, everyone who came out to help us uh, support those devastating wildfires, not only in our fire district, but across Clackamas County and really across the state of Oregon. Uh, where we are today, the Riverside Fire, approximately 138,000 acres. That acreage hasn't moved too much, about 72% com uh, contained. The Beachy Creek Fire, which is uh, in Clackamas County, not all of it, but it did impact Clackamas County. We don't talk a lot about that, but it's still a significant wildfire. That's about 193,000 acres and 80% contained. And then certainly the North Cascade Complex or the Clackamas County Fires, those are about 3,000 acres and, and most, if not all, are 100% uh, contained. Oregon Department of Forestry is the lead agency in the investigations in our office through Fire Marshal Sean Olson is helping support those efforts uh, where we can. And then as we had talked about, we are uh, into the recovery phase, a big part of the recovery phase, like Director uh, Trotter talked about, was the foundation's ability to distribute financial funds. And, and I just have to, to share here tonight on the board meeting we did last Thursday is a special thank you to volunteer Jerry Carney. Jerry has been working tirelessly as an executive board member of the foundation, going out, making contact with community members who've been impacted, researching their situation, has been using extreme empathy and care, and then coming back to the executive committee as we help dole out almost $40,000. So again, a huge thank you to Jerry and his work helping support the foundation and the financial relief. Uh, we are preparing for an after action review like Director Searing had talked about that. It, that is tentatively scheduled for December 11th. So we're working with an individual from outside of Oregon to come in and help facilitate that. So we'll be working around their schedule a little bit. And then also cost recovery. So we are looking at the uh, federal management assistance, fire management assistance grant, FMAG, and uh, also the um, uh, Oregon State conflagration uh, reimbursement and that will be for those uh, major fires as well. So we're working through those billing packets. And as Christina had noted, we'll be likely coming back before the board to recognize uh, the uh, expenditures and then the corresponding reimbursement for those uh, major wildfires. So happy to answer any questions. Any uh, comments or questions for Chief Charlton on the wildfires? Yes, Joe. Um, just wanted to make one more comment that uh, it, it's obvious and evident when you read the end of the board packet tonight, all of the uh, many, many letters from kids and individuals and citizens and people uh, all around during the wildfires, they're all positive. They're all uh, very heartfelt. Uh, it was great to see so many good things happened in this fire it's just the few bad things that make the news and and this that we keep hearing from certain citizens so the there were a lot of really good positive outcomes that happened and i just wanted to mention that yeah agreed uh, director searing thank you for that okay all right uh moving on uh departmental reports Mr. Charlton, you got anything for us? Sure, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I, I think I probably used up enough time with uh, wildfire and COVID. I will just highlight uh, within the fire chief's office is a uh, PIO Brandon Paxton. His report is included and you can see really the social media by the numbers are off the charts. Again, mm -hmm. very, very active with social media that has become a powerful tool on how we can more effectively communicate uh, internally and externally. And then also Brandon and his office has done a tremendous amount of work answering questions, facilitating community meetings to include uh, Fire Prevention Month, which is this month, and the virtual fire station open houses. 
So just because we're in a pandemic doesn't mean that we can't welcome the public into our community fire stations. It just has to be done a little differently this year. So again, a lot of information out of the PIO's office uh, this past September and happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Business Services Division, Chief Whiteley, have anything for us? Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, report is as submitted, and as you see on the, uh, the agenda there, uh, HR is uh, directly right there with me, so I'd be happy to answer any questions for that. Uh, the only couple things I have to highlight is the chief referenced uh, the FMAG, the Fire Management Assistance Grant. Uh, we have submitted the applications for that. That's the easy first part. Uh, and in the near future, we'll be gathering the reimbursement pieces over the next uh, month or two to work for reimbursement on that. We have received the billing packets for the Riverside fire and the North, Com uh, North Cascade complex fires. And we'll be working through those as well. Uh, hopefully we can uh, make good progress as these will probably be the most robust packets we'll be doing historically on, uh, for, these, for these wildfires. Uh, with an HR, uh, just a couple things to note, uh, not gonna run through the full list, but uh, staff remains busy through uh, testing. Uh, for both civil service and non-civil service positions and then moving those forward into chief interviews. I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have at this time. Any questions for Chief Whiteley? Okay, financial services, Christina Day. Do you have anything for us? Any additional things? Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, the financial report is as submitted. I just wanted to point out um, on page two where that, that that blue table that talks about the percent of budget used um, some of those most of those are over the current benchmark of 25 percent and that's really reflecting the additional costs that we've already incurred from those wildfires and from the conflagrations that we've been on so this should look much better uh, once i get that supplemental budget entered into the system and so it'll definitely help with that and then um, see, on the bigger chart, the bar chart, just kind of looking at the fund balance um, for October there, um, it was just below 10 million, about 9 million something uh, at the time of this report. And uh, I, at this point, it's looking like we're gonna make it through to November 15th with the cash on hand. Um, so we'll have to, to see if that trend continues and um, yeah, I don't want to jinx it. It is 2020. So um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you for that. Any comments for Christina? Okay. Um, support services, uh, Chief Nick Brown. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, my report is as submitted. I do want to highlight uh, a, a few things uh, if I have some time. Uh, fleet logistics and facilities, uh, they, were, they were, had a, an, an amazing month uh, and a very busy month um, supporting the wildland fire event. Uh, fleet specifically, um, working on wildfire post PMs of all the vehicles, as well as uh, conflag maintenance during the event. They put in about 271 extra hours of uh, time helping with the wildfire event and, and just really bound together and did a great job. Facilities. Uh, much of the same. Uh, and, and then even to go a step further, they uh, helped with peer support with an emotional support dog. Um, Director Valance uh, flew in the FLIR jet with uh, Battalion Chief Ellison trying to map out the fire. And, uh, and he also uh, staffed a water tender during the event. Uh, kind of a jack of all trades there. And we can't thank him enough. Um, and, and within the district, they still had time to paint the wellness building. So uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, logistics. Oh, I can't, I can't say enough here. Um, a total of 305 requisitions entered uh, into Munis. Uh, logistics was completely busy supporting all the needs of the, of, of the fires. Uh, crew, getting crews, hose, extra hose, medical equipment, uh, water, uh, uh, Gatorade, snacks, breakfast. At one point, they fed up to 275 firefighters a day. Um, and established uh, the, the base camp with the help of uh, Chief Kenna. And, and really to see uh, our people bind together for this incident was, was flat amazing. And, um, I just can't thank 
uh, the training staff as well as fleet logistics and facilities for for all the support needs that they did for for all the members during the fire fire wildfire events. That's that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Chief Brown. You know, I, I read the report for fleet services, obviously for September. So I guess my question is, how's the fleet doing? I mean, I know it took a beating, but how is it doing? Is it? Yeah, we're we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of vehicles had uh, had some minor damage that they were able to to get in there and uh, and hammer out. Um, but our our fleet, it's it's holding up. It's doing good. And then um, the other question I said, I know that there was a tremendous amount of uh, leftovers, if you will, uh, afterwards of water and other stuff. Where was the were they able to find uh, homes or places for uh, to give that stuff to the community before it expires and all that? Yeah, there, there's been a play on play uh, with that. There was at at, at a certain point uh, we involved CCSO, had them come and grab as much as they could. Um, there's still some stuff in the warehouse uh, that, that we could likely uh, help out with uh, um, uh, some future events. So uh, there, there is a plan in play. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, any other board members have any uh, questions or comments for Chief Brown? Okay. Um, community Services, Chief Stewart. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Of the, board. Uh, the report is as submitted. I would like to just highlight a couple of things. Uh, as with uh, services and throughout the organization, uh, the, the folks in community services just knocked it out of the park during the wildfires. Uh, from data services, uh, working on um, point information regarding staffing, working on making sure that our members were uh, getting into uh, tele staffing in their time track so we knew what rigs we had up and, and just. Uh, I don't know how many rigs they had to create within Telestaff, but we used all of our apparatus and, and then some. Uh, so they were busy doing that, uh, working on some mapping for us in the field. Uh, fire prevention had their members out uh, running uh, non-emergency incidents, such as uh, commercial and uh, residential false uh, fire alarms uh, out in CECOM, answering questions on wildfires. Uh, I know uh, emergency management was working with CERT or out uh, assisting with the damage assessments. Um, and ITS was working in the back, uh, helping us get through uh, some of the disruptions that we had uh, and making sure that uh, our communications, uh, NDCs and computers uh, were working during the incident. Uh, this month or last month, uh, data services obviously had a lot of numbers to work on. Um, so in the, the report, you'll see some adjustments, uh, not adjustments, but you'll see some impacts of those, uh, such as uh, we, I worked with partner agency. We worked with AMR to allow us to stop responding to low priority medical calls. Uh, we had a higher number of good intent calls uh, with many, many of those incidents being canceled or out. Um, and we had some challenges getting that data uh, due to some outages and disruptions uh, during the incident. So that was a big piece. They're also working on getting Telestaff uh, a re-implementation set, which is uh, going to be kicked off here early next month, uh, which will improve uh, some of the uh, interfaces uh, on members. Uh, and then I think the last piece that I'd just like to focus on is uh, ITS, uh, or Information uh, Technology Services. Uh, they've been really working hard um, to uh, not just support the daily operations, but improve our systems and our processes. And uh, one of the two things, uh, one is moving us to a uh, remote uh, working capability. Uh, certainly that has been thrusted forward with uh, COVID, uh, but that gave us a, a lot more capacity during the wildfires that we're going to continue to reinforce, um, as well as having a cloud centric uh, component, which uh, helps us be more efficient in how we manage those programs uh, and the, uh, the platforms that we use. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to answer questions or uh, refer them to the directors. Anybody have any comments for Chief Starr? Yeah, Chief Sir, Chief, or not Chief Searing anymore, it's Director Searing. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I had a question for Brian. And then the question for Greg Ramirez. So Chief Stewart, uh, it was, uh, seemed like it was quite some time ago, you did the presentation on the SAFER grant, as far as the grant for the staffing of the Eagle Creek Community Fire Station. And I was just wondering, I hadn't heard anything in a while, I was wondering, did we make any cuts and what, wherever that was in the process? That's a, a great question. And with the grants, uh, unfortunately, uh, with the, the uh, AFG series of grants this year, we were not successful with the SAFER grant. 
Uh, and I think that was largely due to, uh, during the course of that application process, structured what they were kind of some of their criteria. Uh, and so uh, they, they reduced the number of awards. They got rid of the matching uh, requirement. So normally we're required to provide 25% for the first couple of years and 75% for the last or 65% for the last year. Um, but that basically ate up a third of the potential awards by not requiring that that piece. Um, and I think that also increased the, the competitiveness of it in that some agencies that wouldn't normally have the, the funds to be able to match were then, then applying for those. Um, so we uh, we never received any notice that didn't make the cut. However, all the awards were, all, all the funds were expended uh, on September or by September 30th um, for that. And the same piece was the uh, AFG equipment grant. We were uh, seeking to replace a type six uh, engine and uh, we're not successful uh, there. Um, and I'm going to dig into that one. That one, I think we we had a, a, a fairly good shot on. And then the last, the AFG grant for uh, a fire prevention and uh, education effort uh, for fuels mitigation, wildland fire education, uh, we were unsuccessful with um, as well. But we've been reviewing those uh, and the uh, there's another grant opportunity, the assistance to firefighter grant supplemental for COVID uh, opened back up, I think like on October 2nd uh, and or closes on November 2nd. Uh, closes shortly anyway. Um, and Chief Yerkin, I will be working on that to help with reimbursement costs. Okay, thank you. And and then uh, is emergency manager Ramirez on tonight? He's not. No, he's okay. not. Okay. Um, I was just going to pass on if if someone under community services can uh, can follow up with Greg. Uh, I asked at the board meeting last month in regards to if during the wildfires the Estacada search team was actually engaged and Greg was on last month and he said oh yes absolutely and uh, gave a little explanation well the feedback that keeps coming back to me via my engagement and some meetings that I've had with citizens at Estacada and and correspondence that I keep getting and they are all stating that we didn't use the Estacada CERT members and there was no engagement in it uh, as kind of part of the contention of, of, you know, the issues that we're trying to deal with. So if someone, I'd be curious to find out, did we or didn't we, and maybe follow up with that. And if we didn't, then that could be added to what can we do better next time and uh, just follow up on that. So. Uh, certainly director, I'll follow up with uh, Ian Ramirez uh, tomorrow and uh, information you okay thank you any other directors have any comments for chief stewart i actually have um just one thing i want to point out um just and this is kind of my own personal bias to some degree but um the uh i was looking at the data and um just looking at the data that was produced for the september events and um uh, you know, you guys have all heard me when it comes to data and, uh, and analyzing data. And if you just look at the data empirically, other than brush unit 314, who had like 400 calls per service in September, um, the, uh, uh, if you just look at the data empirically, um, September doesn't look that impressive. I mean, it really doesn't. If you just compare it to September of 2019, you know, straight across the board, um, the, it, it's not that much, you know, the call volume and the rest of the stuff doesn't look that that different. This is where, you know, what we've, you guys have all heard me. I don't like percentages because percentages don't tell the whole truth. Uh, unit hour utilization, this all goes with unit hour utilization, um, you know, staff overtime. And I, I read all of your reports and how much extra time that everybody put into the, to the event. But it's, if um, in the future, in five years from now, if somebody looks back at September of 2020, 20 and just looks at the run data, um, it's not going to look that much different than 2019, uh, to be frankly honest. So, uh, and I'm not discounting anybody or any work that has been done, but that just kind of goes to show you how if you just look at the data empirically straight out for way, the way it's produced, um, it doesn't tell the whole story. So, uh, moving forward as we start, uh, you know, making decisions for the fire district and uh, stuff like that, I want you to always think about 
that you know this event how sometimes that data that we get doesn't it, it isn't doesn't tell the whole story and you have to do a, a, a deeper dive to really find out what happened so anyway that's just my comments about that um, um when it comes to data my little data soapbox if you will so <laughs> um, um okay um did that come across okay i was I would try not. I didn't want to be demeaning of anybody's work by any stretch of the imagination. It's just the way data is. Sometimes, yes, sir, Mr. Yeah, Br Chief Brown. I'm just curious on specific data that you're representing. Run volume. Looking for that. Run volume. Straight up run volume. If you just look at straight up run volume, if you straight look at, uh, um, uh, I mean, we ran. If you just look at the data, we ran about 100 calls more in September than we did um, the previous the September from the previous year. And if you just look at uh, like mutual aid given, mutual aid received, there's nothing that jumps out at you there either. Um, if you look at uh, uh, just uh, you know, um, even straight unit responses, it, you know, it just doesn't really jump out at you. You know, I mean, you read one call, you know, that one call was four days long, yeah. but it was one call, right? right. Um, so that's what I'm getting at. It's um, uh, that that's why you um, you know that's what I'm getting at is is from a volume standpoint and some of that stuff it uh, um, it doesn't it doesn't make you warm and fuzzy. And what I'm saying is right now, I mean, I uh, everything you've said, everybody said, I agree with 100 percent, 100 percent, and I agree with all the great work that are But um, if you were to, if five years from now. The next command staff, the next board, and everything looks were to look back on it and compare it to previous years, it wouldn't jump out at you. Um, so that's why I'm saying as we do, as we analyze data and we look at it in the future, we have to take all of those different kind of things into consideration um, when we're well, when we're looking at workload. To be frankly honest, I mean that's really what it comes down to is how much work are our people really doing and run volume and mutual aid given and mutual aid receiving doesn't really doesn't tell the story. So. Totally agree. We have some uh, information on ops that uh, Chief Corliss will, will dive in a little bit deeper to that data that will might help in the clarification for this. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Off my soapbox. Move on to the next thing. Uh, this one says emergency services division, Chief Charlton, and then it gives medical services two lines in there. Yes. And we'll defer to uh, Josh Santos tonight. He's going to pick that up in the absence of Josh Yerke. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. President, members of the board, um, I am going to be the proxy for Chief Yerke this evening, and our report is as submitted with a couple of quick highlights. Uh, first, in the wellness department, um, Director Goodrich and her staff are beginning occupational health test, uh, testing right now, uh, which we do annually. Uh, but this year, in addition to the standard lift of, of getting through all of our employees, uh, we have COVID as well. So, and uh, they are taking extreme measures in their sanitation and PPE protocols to ensure that they have a safe testing process um, throughout this endeavor. So um, also noted uh, for EMS, it's vaccination time again. So we have vaccination clinics, uh, clinics that are underway with our community paramedic, with our first one being this Wednesday, uh, the 21st. It's gonna be at Clackamas High School and uh, we're partnering with Public Health, Rotary, Clackamas Community College and Providence Health uh, for this. And again, in COVID times, uh, we're taking all the precautions. So this is a drive-through uh, vaccination clinic and there they will be performing both COVID testing and um, flu vaccinations. So the times of that are from 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. They have um, ran that a little, a little bit later to allow some of the uh, migrant farmers that are in the area to attend. Um, and, and that's mostly because a lot of them are, are yielding COVID positive results. And so they're really trying to be diligent in, in stopping the spread of, of COVID. Um, and then our, our next, uh, our next clinic will be on Wednesday the 28th. There we are partnering with Kaiser Permanente um, and they are uh, set up in the Clackamas Town Center parking lot, uh, much like we were for our last year's event. Um, and uh, again, this will be a drive-through event where we'll be delivering flu vaccinations. So um, I'm happy to, um, uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna tout on Amy Jo real quick, uh, if I could. 
Um, post wildland, uh, well, the wildfire incident, um, she was asked by the EOC to help with um, temporary housing and then the reintegration of people um, that were affected by the fires. And she came in and was uh, was definitely a leader um, in in that endeavor. And um, and they were very grateful for her help, you know, uh, stepping in. And she has tremendous relationships and tremendous contacts that can facilitate movement quickly. So um, she did a great job with that. She's now back in her office and seeing our our. Um, our referrals from from our fire district and she's working out of her office now but uh she did a great job during those times and some some big leaders shared praise for her so happy to answer any questions yeah i have two questions uh, i saw that five thousand that she received a five thousand dollar grant um anything on that that you can share with us yeah so this is the small grants uh from from clackamas, clackamas county and uh this is the third or fourth year in a row in which she's been awarded that small grant um and uh they are they're just they're elated with the work that she does so this is for every all the incidentals that she does for um temporary housing um sustenance and and other means to take care of these people while they're getting them getting connected to the definitive care they need and out of our 911 system so and then we also have director goodrich and uh chief Kenna live with us if you have any questions for them yeah i actually um i did have a um actually a question i guess for heather about um the health of our of our uh, crews after uh, kind of a probably a rough september if everybody's coming back together again so yes it was a rough september um and we uh one of the one of the um chiefs mentioned that we brought in therapy dogs so uh wellness organized therapy dogs going out with peer supporters to all the stations um, just because we wanted to make sure that we weren't doing too much too soon. And, but we wanted to check in with everyone, remind them of resources, remind them of signs and symptoms they may have and make it a pretty informal environment. Um, and then we've been checking in with peer supporters just to see how everyone is doing. Um, and so far so good. We've had a couple of referrals, but other than that, um, it's been a pretty informal process, but making sure that we reach everyone. Wonderful. Anybody else have any comments for um, Chief Santos or anybody else in that group? Okay, um, I do have one comment I wanted to make towards uh, Chief uh, uh, Kenny about her um, uh, her uh, board packet here. Um, I just uh, I love the way that you, you that you put the a little bit of passion into your report, and so um, it does my heart good to read your little narrative that you put in there about stuff. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for your report, a very detailed report, and I uh, just want to tell you I appreciate that um, that you put so much heart into that report. So um, thank you, Director Cross. I appreciate that. If I may add that um, since. Uh, we tried last year to lay uh, career training, oops, it was my video, um, to lay career training on top of the um, ongoing occupational health testing during the fall. And we found that that was um, not very effective because of the dynamic schedule. And especially during COVID, we have to um, adjust the schedule. Um, we made an effort combined with EMS to put um, mandatory skills testing for EMS recertification. This will be close to your heart um, to make sure that everybody is captured in EMS testing prior to recertification and we don't have a last minute go back. Um, so thanks to Heather and her immense record keeping and tracking people coming through the process. We're making sure that by the end of December, we have everybody captured for those mandatory skills that they have to have in order to be recertified as paramedics and EMTs. Um, so that was our um, kind of hopefully trying to maintain some training value while we're going through our health testing, which is a very dynamic schedule and re requires a lot of move ups. So that was my only um, thank you to Heather for keeping track of us on behalf of uh, training. Thank you for that, Chief. Okay, anything else on uh, Emergency Services Division? All right, Chief Corliss. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Our report is as submitted, and I say our report because uh, Chief Brown and I have been working on the transition of uh, him coming into ops. 
but September was a was a pretty difficult month for both of us. We were we experienced of uh, significant wildfire as we've talked about. And Director Cross, you like uh, you like some data, so I'm going to give you some data. So love it. And, and, part, and part of the reason that you don't see before I get to the data, part of the reason you don't see a real spike in the call volume is the state of Oregon has requested that we put all the calls that uh, go to the Clackamas Complex fire all in one you know, one fire and all the calls that go into Riverside all in one fire. So it only looks like we had had two calls. Mm -hmm. There are a number of calls in those uh, both in both of those fires. So let's get to some of the numbers. Uh, from the start of, uh, of the fire around 9, 7, 6 p.m., the start of the event until the end of the event, we had 212 plus working fires. 22 of them were greater alarms. Uh, 12 of those greater alarms happened in the, fir or 12, uh, in the first six hours. Six of those uh, greater alarms were over three alarm fires. So in the first 72 hours, we had 144 working fires. Mm -hmm. So um, it, uh, it was uh, unbelievably uh, difficult. Uh, we called everybody in. I mean, I, I don't think there was a person in, I say that, I know there was a couple of people that were on vacation that didn't come back, but, uh, but I know uh, just about everybody in the fire district was working in some position. Some of them were working out of their classification uh, to help us out. So uh, we appreciate the job that everyone's done on those fires. Um, and so those are some of the numbers. We're going to work on those as we get to the AAR. We'll have some better numbers uh, for you on the exact number of incidents that we went on. So um, I just want to give you a highlight on that uh, tonight. And then on a personal note, uh, I would like to say thank you to all the board of directors. This is my last official board meeting before I retire. Uh, my official last day is October 29th with my retirement day being October 31st. So uh, I've appreciated the time that I've uh, got to know each one of you and the work that we've done together. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you so much for that, Chief Corliss, and thank you for your uh, service. Thank you for everything you've done for the district, and um, well, you're going to be missed as well. And thank you for the data. I'm hoping that you know. I know for sure that we'll somewhere in our district archives that we will. Um, we will make sure that this shows uh, on the work that was done in this year for future boards and future administrations as well. That'll be very important. Uh, maybe at some point too, Chief Brown, we can get that entered into a, a board meeting as well so that we can archive that in minutes as well um, when, that, when you get that all um, uh, you know, figured out. I know that may be some months, but I, I still think that that's probably important that we, we acknowledge that publicly as well. So um, anyway, any other comments for Chief Corliss? Yes, Chief uh, Director Sering. Um, Mike, those uh, figures that you gave, those data figures, can you email those to us? Yes, we can. Those are uh, fascinating and I'd like to have those. I was trying to write them down, but if you could just email what you do have now, those were interesting numbers that could help us as we're discussing uh, the fire event with people. And then secondly, I also wanted to thank you for your years of service and all that you've done. I've known you and your family for decades and decades and you've done an outstanding job. So thank you. Is this the end of your work back? Like you're done done or is, okay. Yeah, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be wonderful to email that out. Even if you e uh, email it to us saying that uh, preliminary data or something like that, so we understand yeah. that this is not a final, uh, final, final. So we'll definitely get that to you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything for Chief Corliss? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, volunteer services, Chief Dieters. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, training for the month focused around uh, hoses, hose loads, hose drags, things like that. Uh, EMS was canceled, uh, mostly in part due to the wildfires. Uh, and uh, the meetings were all held virtually. The explorers are still not back and they are not training as of yet. Um, and then the station coverage, uh, station 12 was 14 out of 30. Station 13 was 17 nights out of 30. 
Station 18 was uh, 30 out of 30, and we 11 of those were 24-hour shifts, mainly due to the wildfires, and they just didn't get to go home. So, but uh, they uh, stayed there and worked those shifts. And then Station 333, I just put an asterisk by that. There was uh, four, four out of the 30 nights, but those four came in the first week. And then, of course, on the eighth, we had the wildfires. And those uh, lasted, as you know, that uh, second week and then into the third week. And so at that point, we determined that it was probably best to just keep everybody located here at uh, Station 330 uh, for those uh, extra shifts and to have the equipment here ready to go, considering that the fires were uh, as close as you can get to this station. Uh, so, but we're uh, working on you know, trying to hit the 50% if we can uh, for next month. So I'll report that uh, next month. And then the rehab and water tender group was 16 out of 30. Uh, we did have one member, Madeline Heacock. She resigned. Uh, she took a, a job uh, promotion at her work and it's not going to allow her to uh, volunteer anymore. And uh, the volunteer recruitment, uh, they continue to do uh, their classes. They're doing one night a week and basically every other weekend or close to that. And um, that's for the suppression and for the support. Uh, before I turn it over to Kirk, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for uh, Chief Dieters? Okay. Uh, volunteer President Hanley. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. Um, uh, as I touched on last week, um, the volunteers um, put in uh, quite a few hours at the fire camp and at the training center, about 750. Um, part of maybe the question of the Essicata cert, um, we did kind of get involved in, in asking the cert for them to help. Um, so I believe they put in, a, I don't have the number right in front of me, but about 150 hours uh, with us also at the fire camp and the training center working on logistical type uh, items. Um, that's the whole sort, not, not just Estacada. Um, the Monday before, the week before the fires uh, started, we did have a uh, monthly meeting and approved a $2,000 donation to the Estacada Food Bank. Um, that check was uh, just cut this past week and will be delivered uh, delivered uh, in the next week or so. I'll answer any questions. Any questions for President Hamley? Okay. Thank you. Uh, correspondence was wonderful this month. Um, does anybody have any comments about uh, the correspondence in there? So the next meeting, it will be uh, Monday, November 16th, uh, right here, same bat place, same bat time. Um, the uh, uh, one thing before we adjourn, I'd uh, like to ask uh, uh, Rachel and uh, Marilyn that maybe you guys could set up a fake meeting between uh, now and then and maybe uh, troubleshoot some of those challenges that, uh, that we had so that uh, uh, we, can, we can get uh, her on video and audio at the same time. Um, I know that uh, the districts had to make some changes the way we do these meetings just uh, so that we don't have troubles, but uh, maybe we can correct that. So uh, Absolutely. Anybody, got anything, anybody got anything else? Chief Charlton, no, good to go. Do not, thank you. And thank you for all the questions tonight. We'll follow up tomorrow. Okay, I'm looking at the time here. It looks like uh, 1909, is that correct? That's it. 19 or oh, 1910 just changed okay uh we'll have the meeting adjourned at uh, 1910 so thank Good you night. thank you